Some years ago, one late evening on a rainy day, a door-to-door -door salesman stopped by a house. He knocked on the door, a lady opened, and he left with her an, a framed image wrapped in paper. And he said to her, it's raining and I want to leave this framed image in your house and I will come back again to collect it. Days went by, the salesman never showed up. The lady was curious what this framed image was all about wrapped in paper. She took out the paper and there she saw the icon of the mother of perpetual help. She was a non-Catholic. She, she did not know the significance of this icon. She did not even know the name of this icon. A friend of hers said that this icon is the icon of our mother of perpetual help. You want to know more about it? There's a church in her name in this town. She went to the church, wanted to know more about the icon. She fell in love about the icon. She became a Catholic. And her grandson became a redemptress priest, Father Thomas Schmidt, who owes his vocation to a mother of perpetual help. This is just one of the thousands of such stories of faith and salvation that I have come across. And you're so privileged this evening to be sitting in this beautiful church where is enthroned the original miraculous icon of our mother of perpetual help. In the year 1866, the then Holy Father, Pope Pius IX, gave us, the Redemptress, this miraculous icon with the mandate, make her known throughout the world. Make her known throughout the world. It's over 157 years, to be precise. And the Redemptress have tirelessly worked to make her known throughout the world. Of all the images that we have of our Blessed Mother, the most dearest of all is the image of our Mother of Perpetual Help. And some of the biggest shrines dedicated to our Mother of Perpetual Help is with us, Redemptress. And you come from Manila, Baclaran, where every Wednesday, 120,000 people gather for the Novena devotions. Every Wednesday, I've been told that the doors of that church is never shut, even during the pandemic, always open. 120,000 people gather every Wednesday probably the biggest shrine dedicated to our Mother of Perpetual Help. In Saigon, in Vietnam, every Wednesday, 50,000 people come for the Novena to our Mother of Perpetual Help. In Mumbai, Mahim, we have the biggest shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help where people, thousands of people flock every Wednesday. In Singapore, every Saturday, the whole of Singapore comes for the Novena Church for the devotions to our mother of perpetual help. It's not just Catholics. People of all faith come to the shrine of our mother of perpetual help. There's something about her that draws people to her and through her to her son, Jesus. The Bishop of Singapore once said to me, all those who have become Catholics in Singapore have gone through the portals of the shrine of our mother of perpetual help. The journey of faith began at the icon of our mother of perpetual help. 
And no wonder, she's known as the refuge of sinners. She is the star of hope that draws people to her and through her to her son, Jesus. During the Novena meditation this evening, we meditated on the different aspects of the icon. I'm not going to go through every aspect of the icon. There's so much to be said about the icon. I kept insisting on the word icon, icon. I never used the word picture. We don't refer to the icon of a mother of perpetual help as a picture. A picture is something that you see. An icon is something that you read. Just like how you read the gospel, the icon of our mother perpetual help is read. Because the iconography is written, not painted. It is written, the mysteries of human salvation is written, just like how you read the mystery of human salvation in the gospel. The mystery of human salvation is written in the icon. And every time you look at the icon, you see how God unfolds his salvation for all of us. And so let me take you to the icon of our mother of perpetual help. The first thing when you look at the icon is that this icon is bathed in gold. It's bathed in gold. And gold symbolizes eternal joy, heaven, paradise, redemption, resurrection, glorification. And that's the first thing that strikes us when you look at the icon of our mother perpetual help, that there is hope for all of us. I'm here to open the doors of heaven for you. I'm here to draw you to that power of resurrection and salvation to the place of eternal joy, the, parador, the paradise of love. It's bathed in gold. There are four persons in this icon. You have the Blessed Mother, right in the very center of the icon. And in her arms is our perpetual help, her son, Jesus Christ. On either side are the archangels. On the right of Mary is Archangel Michael, who's holding in his wailed arms the vase of vinegar, the lance with a sponge and a spear. On the left of Mary is Archangel Gabriel, who's holding in his veiled arms the instruments of passion, the cross and the nails. They're holding it in their veiled hands because through these instruments of passion comes salvation for all of us. And then we have Mary in her beautiful, dark blue mantle with green lines. This dark blue mantle signifies her universal motherhood. She is the new Eve, the mother of all those who will be redeemed by her son Jesus. And on her head is the star. She is the star. She is the light of Christ that draws all souls lost in the sea of sin to the port of salvation. She is that lighthouse, that radiant star that is a symbol of hope to all of us sinners who are beaten by the high waves in the high sea of sin, lost. Now looking at her, she draws us to the port of salvation. And inside of that dark blue mantle is her red gown. The red gown symbolizes her purity, her virginity. She suffers along with her son as she becomes the co-sufferer in the passion of Christ which is a symbol of martyrdom, of suffering and passion. But the red is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit 
that it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that she brought forth her son Jesus into the world. The eyes of Mary are looking at each one of us. That's the beauty of this icon, that no matter where you are, her eyes are just looking at each one of you, drawing you to her son Jesus, as her hands are pointed to her son Jesus. You can see her right hand pointing to her son Jesus. It's not about me, for in my hands is your perpetual help, Jesus Christ. She draws us to Jesus. Look at her lips. Are oh, they so tiny, so small? Because Mary hardly spoke much in the gospel. It symbolizes her silence. But her ears are wide open. You can see her right here exposed in the veil. The Mary was attentive, paying great attention to the word of God, meditating and pondering. And that's exactly what she expects of us as disciples of Christ, to meditate profoundly on the mysteries of our salvation, to listen to what God is asking of us, to pay attention. And as she draws us, she draws us to her son, Jesus Christ. As we heard in today's gospel passage, Standing at the foot of the cross was Mary. Mary, who is now the mother of all those who will be redeemed by her son, Jesus. She is a mother of hope, a refuge of sinners. And as Jesus gave his beloved mother to his beloved disciple, take her, and afterwards we were told, that the disciple took her to his own home. And that's exactly what we're expected of us today, to take Mary to your home. She is your mother of perpetual help. That anyone who seeks her protection will never be lost, for in her is perpetual help. So let us learn from Mary to be discerning of God's will, to be open, to be attentive to the voice of God. And when we are open, when we are listening, God works great things in each one of us as he did through Mary. And when we are lost in the high sea of sin, turn to Mary, for she is the star of hope who will draw us to the port of heaven. Amen.